Hey guys, what's going on? NJ Chris here. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, so I know I haven't been around for uh, for a long time. I'm finally getting back into uh, to doing a couple things outside and everything. You know, uh, knee injuries are no fun, but uh, plugging along, right? Uh, so uh, I've had this pack for God since 2014. Um, I did a full review on it in 2015 with my loadout. Now it's 2018, a couple years later, and it's still going pretty strong. Um, I've changed out a lot of like my whole gear mentality and everything. I've kind of simplified everything to the point where even a vulture pack can be, you know, a max position vulture can be really, really light. Um, and, you know, lightweight for me, I'm a bigger dude. I can, you know, I'm pretty strong. I can carry, you know, a whole bunch of weight. Um, you know, this is sub 20 pounds. Uh, just the way it sits with my hamping, or <laughs> my hamping with my uh, uh, hammock setup. So I just wanted to go over it, uh, show you, you know, this way you can compare it back to my other video, see like what's changed over the course of a couple of years with it. Um, I'll even show you like how the pack held up and everything. So uh, without further ado, here it is. So um, I've added a couple more pouches since last year. Um, I believe I only had, or well, since three years ago, I've had this pouch on. I absolutely love these little tiny pouches, so I added another one here to the end of this water bottle. Um, so I'm going to start here, uh, just because this is the easiest place to start on this pack. Now, for most part, nothing's really changed when it comes to what's in the water bottle holder. I still use, if I can get this open, I still use my five-year-old uh, cup that I've used forever and I still carry a clean canteen 40-ounce uh, container. Reason I go with metal, um, just in case. Uh, we really don't go into many backcountry areas, but I wanted to have uh, the option of boiling water inside of a container just in case. It, it really doesn't weigh that much. I believe they're like five ounces or so. I know they're heavier than smart water bottles and believe me, I use smart water bottles for everything, but very good peace of mind. And keep in mind, uh, this is a bulletproof kit as well. This isn't a lightweight, you know, 10 pound, your gear is gonna fall apart in two months kit. Um, you know, this stuff is like thousand denier, uh, you know, rips or whatever material they use. <laughs> Most, I'm not even sure, some of this stuff may be even like a canvas. Um, but this water bottle pouch, this is the, um, uh, a Condor water bottle pouch. It's good because it's insulated on the inside. So I could fill this thing up with ice slip it inside of here and I can have cold ish water for like two days which is great you know if I only take out sip put it back in so that's a that's a really been a really good solution to me um, I always carry a whole bunch of handkerchiefs around everywhere uh, they're good for you know for pretty much everything I've kind of dumbed down everything else um, I carry a titanium, well I have two of them because one's my girlfriend, I guess she forgot to take hers out. But I carry two uh, Light My Fire titanium sporks. And then inside of here I carry my Sawyer Squeeze. Um, now I carry a, uh, a smart water bottle on the other side, so I'll screw the smart water bottle on and then this is what I drink from or I can siphon this into my clean canteen. So uh, that's that pouch. Coming on to the front pouch, this, um, carry a separate spare pair of headphones in here. Um, I normally carry like a pair around my neck, uh, at all times, but a, a spare pair of wireless headphones is always good. You know, I'm always breaking them, so, um, it's just a cheap pair. And this kit, um, hasn't really changed much since last time. Still got my Leatherman, still got my small, uh, stone, still got my sandpaper in here for keeping my knife sharp. That really doesn't change. Um, that's, you know, a bulletproof kit for, uh, for pretty much sharpening your knives anywhere you want to as much as you want. Uh, my next uh, little compartment here is paracord. Now with paracord, I carry three hanks of it, okay? Uh, this is about a 30 foot hank. Uh, this is what I use for like my, uh, my food bag, bear bag, whatever you want to call it. Um, I carry about a five foot section. That's this little black piece right here. Um, that five foot is like a tree hugger for me carrying my backpack. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll tie the, the paracord around the tree and then hook it onto this top loop of my backpack right here. Um, I used to use the nail, but you know, I've, you know, it's not good for an environment. So, you know, I, I know I was wrong. I got, you know, I got a bunch of, uh, crap from it from you guys. Um, so, and then I have the green one in here, 
which the green one is about a 10, 12 feet long piece of paracord. I use that for like my tent, or not my tent, my hammock uh, fly. Um, I'll go over that in a little bit. I also carry bank line. Um, this is just cheap bank line that you could buy anywhere, um, like six bucks, seven bucks a roll or something. Uh, it's good for pretty much everything else. So that's the front pack, everything in there. This little side one, the top is, so this whole section right here is my complete fire kit. So I used to carry a pretty decent sized fire kit. I don't anymore. Um, I've realized that when I go out camping and fishing and stuff, we go out in groups most of the time, everybody has a fire kit and everybody has their own way. You know, everybody has the best way of starting fire. So for the most part, I carry two mini bics uh, in there. And then the entire other part of my fire kit fits in that little tiny bag. It's just birch bark, uh, there's some pine tar in there, pine pitch, whatever you want to call it, and then some wax soaked cotton pads. Um, the whole kit weighs two ounces, if that, and uh, I could start multiple, multiple fires with it uh, with no problem. That's my kit. That's what works for me. Oh, oh, also forgot because this is in, uh, in the side here. This weighs an ounce by itself. This is one of those um, pocket bellows. They fold out real strong. You can blow into it, and then this way you could keep, you know, a good two feet away from the fire while you're doing it. This is so vital. I love it. It's like one of my favorite pieces of kit, and it was like 10 bucks on Amazon. So, uh, next pouch right here is my flashlights. I carry three different flashlights on me. I carry a sup fire torch. Now, the reason I carry this is because one, it's a really bright lantern. If I click it too, um, this is, and I, uh, I put this on the back of my boat uh, for night fishing. This is like my boat light, the, the white light that you're supposed to put in the back of the boat. Then I have LED green and red strips on the front. Um, so that's real good. It also has, if you're at camp and it's really buggy, it has a red mode. And then also it has a strobing mode, which I don't really use, but it is what it is. The good thing about it, I'll show you. It runs off of one 18650 battery. And sorry about that one second. <laughs> One 18650 battery that goes in there, uh, and it lasts a really long time on that one battery. I mean, obviously the capacity of the flashlight is, um, you know, proportionate to the capacity of your battery. So you have better batteries, you're gonna uh, have a longer run time on the, on the light. So I have one 18650 flashlight. Um, I have this little case, and the reason I have this case is because it's hard on the outside. So these are for my other two headlights, or flashlights I should say. So. Um, I carry the Phoenix, I think it's the HL1, HL10, I'm sorry. So it's the Phoenix HL10, it's a single triple A headlight. I like really light headlights because I don't like, you know, you know, moving your head around and uh, I actually lost one in the ocean doing that one day, you know, had a really heavy headlamp on, went to turn around real quick to net a fish and totally lost it. So um, I keep them in the hard case because, look at me, I'm falling here, because I keep the batteries in them. Uh, so if you have it in a hard case, the buttons won't get pushed, I found. So got that, and I got the Olight S2 Baton, bulletproof flashlights, love them. Uh, I would never, you know, in my other kit a couple years ago, uh, I, I had those like Cree, cheap $3 Chinese flashlights. Um, I've realized over the course of the years that you can get by with them for a year, they're not going to last. That's the problem. I, I had two or three of them and all three of them failed me. So I spent the 40 bucks, got the Olight. Olight has been a wonderful flashlight uh, ever since then for the most part. So that's that side of my kit. Uh, on the front of this pack, uh, normally I only keep these on me when we go out uh, to like Round Valley or there are two really lightweight walkie talkies. Uh, they can be charged via my battery pack with a micro USB cable. This is, you know, if we have multiple boats, um, you know, we only have like 16 foot boats. So, you know, we don't have any of the high tech, uh, you know, talking equipment that other boats have, you know, the VHF radios or whatever. So two really, really lightweight. These things weigh like three ounces a piece. It's wonderful. Um, these are the Cobra micro talks. Um, they'll last about 10 hours on a set of batteries and then you got to charge them. It takes a couple hours to charge them. Um, really good for, you know, being out on multiple boats and communicating. If you have one people, um, some people ashore, someone out in the boat, you can talk. Uh, there's like a 15 mile talk range on them, something crazy. I don't know, 15, 18 miles. Uh, so that's, 
that's the front of the pack. As you can see, I, I've really simplified stuff, I believe, since the last time. Um, this carabiner is a, um, a carabiner to an Eno hammock. Um, my old Eno hammock, well, actually, my girlfriend's old Eno hammock, uh, had a, like, a, a rip in it or something, so I contacted Eno, they replaced it. Um, I told them that I was going to keep the carabiners. They said fine, so, to reuse them. So I did that. So, this side of my pack, um is where my tool belt is and also it's where I keep my water bottle. Now, I normally get a new smart water bottle out on every trip. This is just here because I just left this weekend. So um, I normally get it uh, at least one, possibly two, and then I'll get like the sports cap for them. Um, just because they're really, really light, I use them as my dirty water bottles that I hook my Sawyer squeeze right up to. And then, you know, I'll squeeze that into my clean canteen or something else. So a uh, really good and efficient way of filtering water. Um, I mean, it's been done for the most part uh, by all hikers. <sighs> all right, so when it comes to my tools, I have totally simplified. I used to carry that big condor knife. I used to carry two moras, and I used to carry uh, my baco. I've simplified to two different tools, and that's it. And these are the tools that I like most. I have the Mora Classic, which has been the best knife I've ever used in my life. It's a perfect size for everything. I could fillet fish with it. I can do camp chores with it. Um, I could keep it razor sharp with, um, you know, with the type of steel that it is. Mora has, I just, I, I love it. For a $10 knife, for a 12, 10, $12 knife, you literally can't beat the quality of it. You, there's, it's impossible. So I took all the crap I used to have on my sheath off. I used to have a ferro rod on here and everything. Never really used it, so I do have one uh, straw in there uh, full of like Vaseline soaked cotton, and then I have a little bit of fat wood on there. So really, really light, a couple ounces, and that's good. My Baco, my Baco Laplander saw. This saw has been through everything in the last five years. It still works perfectly good. It's not as straight as it once was. Uh, the paint is definitely chipping off the sides, off the front. You can't read any of the logos, but it's still razor sharp it still cuts as though it was new after five years of heavy use now i really mean like heavy use like i leave the saw out in the rain my friends use it to cut wood they bend it i've, I've had to bend it back with a pair of vice grips it's wonderful it's a wonderful saw all right uh going into the main section of the pack this is where i simplified everything um uh, let's start on the outside right here so on the outside Got some, uh, got some shit tickets. That's uh, self-explanatory. I got my MSR Siegel. Um, I believe this is the, it's either the 900 or the 1000. I don't remember. It's either a liter or a 1.1, something like that. I don't remember exactly what it is. Um, I'm going to do a review on this of how I set it up, but it's a simple mess kit. Um, it's a bulletproof mess kit. It's not going to fall apart ever on me. That's why I bought it. And that's why I like it. So that's literally all that's in this front pouch. Uh, and the reason I keep these pouches pretty um, uh, light is because I put clothes in here as well. So that whole thing can be filled with clothes. And yeah. Next, going down, let's unclip that and find the zippers, which is on this side. Um, next, the pack clamshells. Ah. All right. So with the clamshelling. Right here, I have four things in the pack, and that's all I need. I have my hammock, which I've done a full review on. This is the fifth year I'm using it. It's still going strong. There are no rips in it. You know, makes great hammocks. I have all the straps, everything else in there. 19 ounces on that. I have my rain fly for over the hammock. This is a 12 by 12 foot Noah tarp, uh, Kelty Noah tarp. Um, served me great so far for the last couple years. It's not the lightest weight tarp on the market now, but uh, you know, I did spend the money on it back then, so I'm gonna use it. Uh, I still got plenty of years of use out of that one. This is where I get a lot of shit on from everybody. This is the Ozark Trail. Um, lightweight, cool weather, 40 degree rectangular sleeping bag. I, for summer, I love this bag. It's exactly what I need. It's lightweight. Um, it's really, really small, as you can see. It's ridiculously small. Um, and, you know, when you're camping out in 60, you know, minimum degree temperatures at night... There's, there's no reason you need anything else. Um, spring, fall, in the early parts of spring, late parts of fall, totally different story. I will use something else. I will not go this light. But this serves me perfect most of the summer when we go camping. So 
for the most part, that's that. Now, the final part of my kit is my essentials kit. Um, this has everything I have in it that I need. Um, I tried, like I said before, I tried to get all the little stuff that I had in all of my small pouches into this kit. Um, things I've changed from last year. Uh, so the medical portion of it, I added a better tweezers. Um, I added, if I can hold on to anything today, I added an open L knife. This is one of the, it's really, really sharp. So if you need to get a splinter out or anything, uh, I kind of got rid of everything else and I used this herbal insect essential oil blend for, um, like for insects and stuff. It's lemon, eucalyptus, citronella, cedarwood, peppermint, lemongrass, and geranium oil. Um, works decent, I guess. Um, that's it. Um, you know, same battery pack going strong. Still the same RAV power. This thing is awesome. You know, that's, that's everything I have. So this way, when I need to go grab something in my pack, it's literally all in one place now for the most part. You know, flashlights and other things that are in, that are a different story. But uh, for, you know, everything else has pretty much remained the same. I still got these things on here in case I wanted to go tent camping and throw a sleeping pad on. You know, could, could still do that. Still same rugged bottom. For the most part, this pack has held up good. Uh, there are a few stitches coming loose over five years of use. Um, there's a few, there's a little bit of discoloration in a couple areas. Definitely on the inside of the pack, there are a lot of frayed edges. Um, the straps right here where they hold most of the weight, I've kind of like used the, uh, the, sh the load lifters on the shoulders um, and are going on that now because these are becoming a little little sketchy. Um, I know that Maxpedition would probably replace it if I asked them to, uh, but as of right now, it's holding up. So really great pack for five years. Uh, I believe I paid like 150 bucks for it. It's served me good so far. So that's, that's my loadout, guys. That's everything I use um, for 2018. If you have any questions, uh, leave me the questions. Any comments, put them down in the comment section below. And as always, thanks and have a great day.